Welcome back runners. Today, more than in the past, uh, using the different gear available uh, on the market, we can collect uh, uh, tons of data. Then it's easy to get to the point that you are collecting lots of uh, uh, different metrics, uh, but uh, then actually not using that information. Then the question is, which one do you consult often and uh, which is your approach? Whether you are new to running or uh, have been running uh, for years or uh, you are a world class uh, racer, knowing what running metrics uh, to pay attention to now can be uh, discouraging. Therefore, today I would like to check with you the metrics that I usually check uh, and uh, the approach and the middle I use uh, to monitor all of them. It doesn't mean that my approach is the best one or the unique one. I just want to share with you the way how I read the data, which uh, maybe uh, can give you another uh, point of view you didn't consider so far. And please, if you follow another approach or middle, which can give us another uh, way to interpret the data, uh, share it in the comment below. But before to start, guys, uh, just a quick and important reminder. If you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up also for the YouTube algorithm and uh, to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any new video on a weekly basis. You will support the channel and the community behind and it is really important for me in order to continue this amazing experience and to share with you my uh, running passion. Say that, let's start uh, saying that the data you are collecting uh, should fit with your goals. If, uh, for instance, you are looking for weight loss, the calories, uh, counting mileage uh, or the time running uh, uh, might be the more important metrics to look uh, for you instead of uh, uh, run specific metrics. On the other hand, if you want to improve your personal best or uh, somehow to improve your performance over time, then uh, your pace or other important metrics uh, are good to know in order to uh, optimize your performance. For who already know me, you know that I usually run for improving my performance uh, for the next race or time trial. Uh, so um, the approach I follow is uh, to check all the metrics to monitor uh, my performance. But my suggestion is uh, if you don't need it, um, don't get distracted by data. Uh, just consider that the distance, uh, frequency and pace are the backbones uh, of training and you don't need any fancy watch uh, for them. A phone with GPS and with one of the running up is enough. Say that, usually I split my checks in two different categories. The first one is performance, um, where I usually consult, for instance, the power, the pace, uh, the cadence, the speed, uh, uh, the heart rate, uh, the training effect, uh, the VO2 max, uh, which allow me to check if uh, my performance is uh, uh, improving over time, uh, so if my training is working well or not. On the other end, the running dynamic metrics, uh, which are connected, of course, with the uh, performance metrics, uh, uh, for instance, the strut length, uh, the average vertical ratio, uh, the vertical oscillation, and so on, which uh, allow me to check my running technique, uh, to avoid any injuries, uh, and also to improve the performance. Important to notice is that I don't check them uh, every single day, uh, because uh, from day to day it won't uh, look uh, very different. But if I look uh, after two weeks, for instance, uh, I usually notice a difference and if I had progress or not. So, of course, after every single training, I quick double check the data, like, for instance, uh, distance pace, uh, um, in order to check if I achieved the um, training planet. But after that, uh, I focus more on the trends, even because it can feel frustrating if you only focus on the day-to-day -day, uh, improvements, since running progress uh, doesn't develop overnight. But I want to remark that uh, the regular data collection is uh, so important to see how my fitness is trending. And today there are several uh, web platforms uh, and tools which allow us uh, um, to watch the trends. Uh, for instance, Garmin Connect, uh, Stride Power Center, uh, Strava and so on. I will show you an example uh, with Garmin Connect because I'm using uh, a Garmin uh, 245, which uh, uh, review video you can find in the link up here. And I find it very intuitive and I have most of the data then. But the focus in this video is not the tool used, but uh, rather the approach used uh, to read the data easily without um, getting lost. And I'm sure that the other platforms available are more or less sharing the same features. So let's open Garmin Connect 
and uh, go to the reporting section. Of course, you can open every single um, activity, but this is not the way I usually double check my trend. Instead, if you go uh, to the reporting section, uh, you immediately find the aggregated data uh, for all the activities. Uh, if, for instance, you want to check the calories uh, you burn during the uh, running, uh, swimming, uh, or cycling, or other uh, activities, uh, or if you want to check other metrics that uh, are listed here. You can easily check the last week activities, the previous month, or the previous six months, and even the last year, or uh, the previous years, using the arrows in the left-hand side uh, of the dates. So immediately you will compare different metrics considering different activities. I usually go running and sometimes cycling, so most of the time I focus more on the running activities, which um, we have here in the, this section. First metric you can compare is the number of activities uh, aggregated per day, week or month. This is useful especially when you uh, don't have to prepare any race but you are just maintaining uh, to check if I'm increasing or uh, decreasing uh, my activities over time. Then I can monitor uh, the calories uh, for every activities, always with the same aggregation per day, week or month. Particularly important for who want to lose weight or simply to avoid uh, to gain any weight. <laughs> I can compare with the previous years as well, like uh, for all the other metrics uh, listed here. Moving on, we have the average heart rate metrics. Uh, a person's ideal heart rate uh, during running and uh, other forms of exercise depends on their age, current uh, um, activity level, overall fitness, and uh, medical conditions. The American Heart Association advised that people aim uh, to reach between 50 um, and 85% of their maximum heart rate during the exercise. According to their calculation, uh, maximum heart rate uh, is around 220 beats uh, per minute, minus the person's age. Uh, therefore, at 20 years old, the uh, maximum heart rate uh, would be around 200 beats per minute. On average, the association recommends the following target heart rate during exercise. So I'm basically to the hedge for my category, and this is a pretty much important metric to check. And on top of that, please do your visit with your doctor regularly. Then let's move in one of the uh, most consultant metric, uh, the average pace. Average pace just means uh, it is taking every mile uh, split uh, you had during your uh, run and um, averaging it out to uh, one number. For example, if um, my 30 minutes uh, run consisted of split of uh, 8 minutes 30 seconds, 8 minutes uh, 40 seconds, 45 seconds, or 8 minutes 35 seconds, my average pace is uh, 8 minutes 37 seconds. And so looking into these metrics, I can see over the months uh, or weeks if I'm uh, running faster or uh, slower, or if uh, my average is uh, the same over time. Another important metric is the average uh, running cadence, uh, meaning how many strides uh, per minute uh, we have during running. Uh, most recreational runners um, will have a cadence between 150 uh, to 170 strides per minute. A cadence of less than 160 uh, strides per minute is usually seen in runners uh, who over stride. But the good news is that um, as you improve your cadence, you will simultaneously be uh, correcting your overstriding. And as we can see, uh, we can assess this data and uh, check if the, there is any issue um, of overstriding uh, during the weeks, months or years. So it is a good indicator which uh, can be used for checking uh, your running technique. The next metric is the average running uh, uh, speed, which uh, differ quite a lot per person. Of course, the distance that has been covered also has a large influence uh, on uh, the average running speed. Uh, other factors that play a, a role uh, uh, are weather conditions so, and uh, course type. I have to say that usually uh, I refer to the pace and uh, really rarely uh, to this metric. Let's move on the stride length metric, uh, an important metric uh, I check because our speed uh, depends on the length uh, of each stride and uh, the rate of um, which you 
turn strides over. If you want to go faster, uh, you have to increase either the stride length or uh, the stride turnover. The length of your stride depends on your height, uh, your fitness level and your body individual uh, biomechanics. Regardless of the length of your stride, uh, a faster stride rate uh, of uh, 180 uh, to 200 uh, uh, steps per minute uh, may be the best way to improve uh, uh, your running performance. A new USA study uh, finds uh, um, the stride length people naturally uh, choose is uh, the best uh, for them, whether they are experienced or inexperienced uh, runners. So in this case, the averages uh, between runners uh, are misleading. Uh, what is important to check uh, is uh, if your stride length is uh, um, changing over time. Declaring there is a method uh, prefiguring the exact uh, strat length in uh, human is suspect because people have different approaches uh, to running. Some uh, elite athletes uh, go faster by taking uh, uh, short strides um, frequently, while others take fewer steps uh, per minute but uh, cover uh, far more ground with uh, uh, each step. The reason for these chosen methods uh, uh, of running aren't clear but uh, they could have to do with uh, whether an athlete uh, is more skilled at uh, producing uh, power or uh, as a more responsive uh, uh, neuromuscular system that uh, turns the legs over faster. Let's move to another important metric, the average vertical oscillation ratio, which will check my running technique. Uh, if it is too high, I will bounce too much instead of moving forward and uh, this will affect uh, my running efficiency. In particular, this metric is uh, a measurement of vertical oscillation uh, divided by your stride length, uh, then as, percent as a percentage. A lower vertical uh, uh, ratio number indicates a small cost for uh, a large benefit. The lower the vertical ratio, the more efficient your running is. So here it is important to check if uh, it is decreasing during uh, the weeks, which means we are improving. Another important method for my running technique is the ground contact time balance. Uh, we have just to check uh, if the percentage is remaining in 50, 50 for left and right foot, uh, which means uh, we have the same ground contact time uh, in both feet and uh, we have a balance. In my case, I slightly push more uh, with one foot, uh, as you can see here, uh, but till a certain percentage for me is normal. Uh, as soon as I overcome this percentage, I uh, schedule a sport massage. Stepping into the ground contact time metric um, is the time between the first part of the foot uh, touch the ground and uh, the last part of the foot leave the ground. It is determined by three main factors. The ability to apply the force uh, to the ground very quickly, uh, so basically the power, uh, the stiffness of the leg uh, at the moment of the foot stride, a stiffer leg is able uh, to capture more free energy from the ground and then to use it. And then biomechanical characteristics uh, such as the position of the foot in the relation to the center of gravity at foot stride. Uh, a foot that lands in front of your uh, body center of gravity acts as a brake and uh, thus increases ground contact time. As baseline, your ground contact time should be below uh, 300 milliseconds. However, fast runners have uh, significantly lower uh, numbers in um, 175 uh, 200 millisecond range. If your ground contact time is already well under 300 milliseconds, uh, it's still totally worthwhile to shorten it because even a small amount of improvement can make a significant uh, impact on your uh, times in longer races. Then we have the lactate uh, threshold, which is a critical metric uh, to understand our limits. It's a good measure to determine your endurance capabilities. Uh, it identifies the exercise intensity level at which lactate uh, starts to accumulate in the bloodstream faster than the body can remove it. Uh, this can result in rapid fatigue, um, feeling of uh, nausea, uh, uh, fast breathing, stomach pain, and so on. Uh, but I don't have this feature in my watch, so no data available. And in any case, I would suggest you to uh, do regular serious uh, lactate tests, uh, or at least at the beginning of uh, uh, a new season. 
Moving on, on the total activity time, it gives uh, you just how many minutes uh, of running you are uh, doing, aggregated per day, week, months, so you can easily recognize uh, if you are running less than usual. The same, I would say, uh, for the total distance, uh, but uh, then now let's jump uh, into the next interesting uh, metric, which is uh, the training effect, uh, which give you to information about uh, the aerobic, uh, so to the cardiorespiratory uh, fitness uh, or anaerobic benefits. Uh, it is an indicator measured uh, from 0 to 5, uh, where 5 is uh, overreaching and 0 is no benefits. I usually uh, check these metrics uh, for the last 4 weeks uh, to see if my training is efficient or not. But now let's move on my favorite uh, metric, which is the training status. Uh, you have a general status, which say, uh, to you if you are productive or not. Uh, for instance, in this case, it says to me that the last year I was uh, productive. It gives you uh, the months uh, with different colors for different months, uh, which means if you were productive or maintaining or unproductive over the months. And uh, in parallel, we have uh, the VO2 max and the training load as well. The VO2 max uh, is uh, the measurement of the maximum amount of oxygen a person can utilize during uh, intensive exercise. It's a common measurement used to establish uh, the aerobic endurance uh, of an athlete prior or during the course of the training. In the past year I had the V2 max go to 64 uh, which was great. Uh, this year unfortunately due to the current situation is decreasing but it is still in a good range. On the other end, the training lot uh, will give you an idea of the ideal training lot. Uh, this one that you can see here in uh, green and uh, how you perform it uh, to avoid overtraining or training to less. For instance, this year I'm having a good training lot. I found this graph really powerful and helpful. In regard to the next metric, the vertical oscillation, I usually prefer to check the vertical oscillation ratio uh, because it's taking into account the stride length as well. But of course, reducing the vertical oscillation will help improve uh, uh, running economy and waste less energy uh, for vertical uh, motion. So somehow we should check that the trend is negative rather than positive over time. As I said, in regard to the VO2 max, I'm still in a good range, but uh, it was better in the previous uh, years, and uh, here you can check uh, the values over time. Another nice feature is the progress summary uh, that you can aggregate uh, per week, month, year, and so on. Uh, but I usually check um, it per month uh, so that you can uh, uh, see immediately the distance, uh, the bit per minute or other metrics in a row. You can also aggregate the data per year, but this is uh, a check that I rarely do. Another method to check the trend is to compare two or more similar activities during the different months, uh, maybe in the same path. In Garmin Connect you can easily do it, uh, but I prefer to use the overall status because much easier to read. Similar checks you can do with different uh, uh, applications, for instance with the uh, uh, Strat Power Center, uh, but as I said in this video I wanted to share uh, more uh, my method uh, to avoid to get lost uh, in all this data um, and the medics which maybe can uh, help some of you. So because it is easy to get obsessed uh, by all this data uh, it is great to check maybe a um, few days every month to make sure uh, uh, you are on track. On the other hand, if you really don't care how fast you are going, uh, uh, don't stress yourself out looking at the pace uh, but just enjoy running. Say that, guys, as usual, uh, if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up. Also, for the YouTube algorithm, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it is really important and uh, the whole community will benefit out of a channel grow. As usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video next week.